we are on the way to becoming a two-tiered society composed of a few winners and a larger group of Americans left behind whose anger and whose disillusionment is easily manipulated. The old middle class has become an anxious class, worried not only about sustaining their incomes, but also about keeping their jobs and their health insurance. On a recent national poll, 55% of American adults said they no longer believe that you can build a better life for yourself and your family by working hard and playing by the rules. In the years after World War II, America built the biggest middle class in world history on the foundation of that bargain. We turned our hard work into homes and cars and health care and pensions, and the middle class grew and prospered and enriched further as the barriers to race and class and gender slowly began to fall, just began to fall. Poverty reached an historic low, and the sense of possibility, that wonderful sense of possibility, grew stronger. But then something happened. Around 15 years ago, 15 years ago, this American dream began to fade. And as it faded, middle-class families tried every means they had of holding on. Spouses went to work. When did you find that great increase in women in the workforce? In the late 1970s, in the late 1980s. Both parents worked longer hours, or they took multiple jobs. They decided to have fewer kids. Middle class, actually, the number of kids in an average middle-class family has actually declined. Middle-class families, notwithstanding these coping mechanisms, middle-class families have not been able to regain their footing. They push these coping mechanisms about as far as they can go, and they still feel that they are losing the American dream. My friends, we are on the way to becoming a two-tiered society, composed of a few winners and a larger group of Americans left behind whose anger and whose disillusionment is easily manipulated. Once unbottled, mass resentment can poison the very fabric of society, the moral integrity of a society, replacing ambition with envy, replacing tolerance with hate. Today, the targets of those rage, that rage are immigrants and welfare mothers and government officials and gaze, and an ill-defined counterculture. But as the middle class continues to erode, who will be the targets tomorrow? All of which raises the central question, why is it no longer the case that working hard and playing by the rules reaps a just reward? Why is it that over the past 15 years, the middle class has been fragmenting? Simply this. Hard work is not enough anymore because two emerging forces have rewritten the rules. The rules are now different. The first emerging force is technology, largely computerized, computer-based technology, which has either eradicated or devalued every routine job in America, which can be done by a software program, and simultaneously enriched every job utilizing the problem-solving skills of the human brain. The second force is global competition, which has reinforced the same trends, imperiling the jobs of those who must compete with low-wage workers elsewhere on the planet, while rewarding those better equipped to take advantage of new markets for American insights and American skills. And we cannot overlook labor unions, whose decline accounts for as much as 20% of the increase in wage inequality among men. Now, we know that we cannot resurrect the old middle class of the first decades after World War II. The economy has changed forever. We can't bring that back. But what we can do is clear the way for a new middle class, a middle class equipped to master the realities of the new economy, at least as large, even more inclusive than the vast middle class of our younger years. A new middle class with plenty of room for people who play by the rules without requiring necessarily a four-year college degree as an entry ticket, 
A new middle class that rests on a refinement of the old American bargain. You take responsibility, you take responsibility for working hard, you get a chance to work smart. The private sector has a critical role to play in creating this new middle class. It will not happen unless companies invest heavily in training their workers to use the new technologies and give them authority to make decisions. This is not a matter of charity. This is not a matter of doing good. This is a matter of the bottom line. The best companies in this country right now large and small, Levi Strauss, Lincoln Electric, LS Electro Galvanizing, Anheuser-Busch, they are treating their workers as assets to be developed, nurtured, trained, rather than as costs to be cut. Some of them are also sharing with their workers the upside gains of the enterprise, as well as the downside risks, converting a portion of wages into a share of the profits, bringing their employees in as genuine partners, I've begun to travel around the country. I'm going to do much more of this, celebrating the companies and the workers that are leading the way in this new compact. But mark my words, if American industry fails to forge such a compact with their workers, it will jeopardize American competitiveness in decades to come. If American business continues to pursue short-term profits at the price of insecurity and falling living standards for a large portion of our society, it will sooner or later reap the bitter harvests of popular rage. The American public is basically pro-business, but that support rests upon an implicit bargain. And American business betrays that bargain every time it fires an older worker in order to hire a younger one at a lower cost. Every time it provides gold-plated health insurance to top executives, but it cuts health insurance or denies health insurance to its regular workers. Every time it labels an employee who had been a full-time employee an independent contractor for the purpose of getting that employee off the payroll and lowering various benefits every time it discards its workers rather than investing in their future capacity to produce and produce more and produce better and produce smarter, particularly when profits are booming. What America must do fundamentally is empower every man and woman to earn their way into the new middle class. This is the administration's central mission. We must not be distracted and will not be distracted by, by secondary concerns or entangled in partisan wrangling. We're eager, we are eager to cooperate with the new leadership in Congress on how best to rebuild the middle class. But there will be no compromise on our dedication to this mission because America's real choice for the future in coming decades is between strenuous measures to restore our middle class tradition and equally strenuous but infinitely sadder efforts to accommodate ourselves to its disappearance. Thank you and have a wonderful Thanksgiving.